When we talk about cats in the Ice Age, your mind might immediately go to the saber-toothed predators of the Pleistocene. Smilodon and other Machairodonts such as Homotherium were widespread and prominent during the stretch of time, and remain icons of the Cenozoic era. But what I feel isn't often discussed enough is another group of cats that lived alongside these felids, one that should be far more familiar to us. These are the big cats, and to be more specific, the members of the genus Panthera. Today, this is represented by animals such as lions, tigers, and jaguars, but there were even more of these cats alive in the not-too-distant past. From distinct species such as the cave lion and the American lion, to similarly large subspecies like the Nandong tiger, the Pleistocene was home to all kinds of these felids. Today, however, I'd like to cover an animal I find particularly interesting, not necessarily due to characteristics like its size, but rather for where it was found. As you can tell by the title, that animal is the European jaguar, Panthera gobazigensis. First off, when and where did this animal evolve? Well, some researchers believe that the ancestor of the European jaguar evolved on the continent of Africa, the same continent that housed some of the earliest pantherines such as the Pliocene Panthera principalis. About two million years ago, the genus Panthera saw a split, with one branch leading to modern-day relatives and another leading to gobazigensis. I say that, but of course big cat taxonomy fluctuates quite a bit, and the relationships between different pantherines have been disputed over time. That said, even though skeptics do seem to agree with the idea that Gobazigensis itself did at least evolve in Africa, this is in spite of the fact that the European jaguar is best known from its, well, European remains, as fossils have been found in Africa as well. Like many Ice Age animals, the European jaguar was a bit larger than the animal speculated to have been its closest relative and descendant. Gobazigensis ranged in size from around 90 to 120 kilograms, or 200 to 250 pounds, with larger specimens clocking in at 130 kilograms or 290 pounds. Compare that to the modern-day jaguar, whose weights generally sit in at that lower range, somewhere around 210 pounds. It should be noted that larger jaguars have been known to exceed 300 pounds, though these sizes aren't as common, even for larger males. What we see is that on average, Gobazigensis is generally larger, and it's not unreasonable to assume that high-end individuals could eclipse the weight of even the largest jaguars. The European jaguar sported a robust dentition, with its lower half bearing strong similarities to that of the modern jaguar. Its upper dentition and cranium, however, are distinct from Panthera anca, which would support the unique speciation of the European jaguar. The exact strength of its bite force is unknown, though Panthera anca is known for having the strongest bite force of any living cat relative to its size, with the ability to crush through turtle shells and the skulls of caimans. It could be possible that its purported ancestor could have also possessed a similar capacity, though that would be speculation on my part. The jaguar has a bit more of a specialized diet compared to other pantherines, whereas the European jaguar's prey was larger and more in line with other large felids, so perhaps this crushing bite suited for armored reptilian prey may have not been necessary. Let's take some time to talk about the animal's range, since man was it enormous. Fossils have been found everywhere from Africa to the Middle East all the way to Asia, with subspecies such as Panthera gobazigensis jinpuensis living in countries like China. And of course, Europe is part of this range. Among the pantherines, gobazigensis has the distinction of being the first to step into Europe. That's right, before animals such as cave lions, it was this jaguar that ventured into the northern continent. As far as its European range goes, it was spread all the way across both ends of the continent, with remains uncovered in countries such as France and Spain, all the way to Russia. From there, some scientists speculate that the animal could have migrated across Beringia into North America a little around 900,000 years ago. This date would correlate with the first appearances of today's jaguar species, Panthera anca, which show up in North America around 850,000 years ago. And yes, modern jaguars are also found in North America, even though they're traditionally associated with South America. The animals found throughout Mexico with a small, and I mean very small, like three or four at most, population of them in the United States, in places like New Mexico and Arizona. We don't have too much information when it comes to the types of habitats this jaguar would have inhabited, but many researchers believe that it could have lived in forests. This would be in line with jaguars of today, but rather than stocking the tropical rainforest of Central and South America, Gobas agensis would also be found prowling the colder, temperate forest of Europe. In lower latitude regions, especially those in Southeast Asia, it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that the European jaguar could be found in some more tropical rainforest that we traditionally associate with Panthera anca. It was this habitat that allowed the European jaguar to inhabit countries and regions home to a variety of other large cats. 
These include close cousins in the cave lines, as well as the scimitar-toothed cat, Homotherium. That's not to say that Goba's Zagensis wouldn't be the only big felid on the block where it lived. These Pleistocene forests also featured cats such as Megantarion, Machairodon closely related to Homotherium and the American Smilodon. Gomba's against and Megantarion share territory in the jaguar's famous European localities, but potentially in Asia as well. When it comes to prey, the European jaguar could probably tackle larger herbivores than today's jaguars. But given the fact that it was still smaller than a good deal of contemporary felids, including other big cats, its food sources wouldn't be all that different. Add that to the fact that the animal, much like the modern jaguar, probably lived a solitary life, and we can rule out the chances of any epic proba city in a rhino takedowns. In reality, the animals Gomba's against us could hunt would include large deer, medium-sized bovids, and suets such as the wild boar. But it's time I confess something that might be a bit disappointing to many of you, and that's that the European jaguar might not have even been a jaguar in the first place. A 2020 study by Chitar and colleagues examining the skull of Panthera Gomba's against us placed the species as being sister to the tiger instead, with the two cats having evolved from a sort of stem tiger. This was due in part to the similarities the upper dentition bore to that of Panthera tigris, in addition to how many cranial features they had in common. This would mean big things for big cat evolution as a whole. If what the paper purports is indeed true, it would mean that Gomba's Zagensis was probably restricted to that Eurasian range, ever migrating to the Americas and giving rise to the modern jaguar. Despite the fact that this is just one study, and that the popular take is that the European jaguar was indeed a jaguar ancestor, I still wanted to bring it up since the research here is pretty interesting. I've linked it to the description if you want to read up further. But jaguar or not, Pantherogomba's Zagensis went extinct quite a bit earlier than many of the Pleistocene fauna we've discussed on the channel, dying out around 300,000 years ago. Its demise seems to have been primarily due to competition from other predators. Gomba's Zagensis had far less in the way of rivals back when it was the only big cat where it lived. Unfortunately, the arrival of animals such as other pantherines proved to be difficult for the European jaguar. Now, these animals would have all had various effects on Gomba's Zagensis. For example, lions are found in more open habitats, so these two animals could coexist through niche partitioning, for the most part. What would be a greater challenge, however, would be other cats that were known to have inhabited forests such as leopards. Even on the other end of their range in Asia, this jaguar saw a threat in the form of the tiger. All in all, though, the European jaguar represents just another example of how diverse the range of megafauna could get back in the Pleistocene. It's unfortunate that this cat, a pioneer of pantherines in Europe and a species with an enormous range, went extinct. But if it's indeed true that the animal was the ancestor of jaguars, it's good to know that the legacy of Gompas against us lives on today in some way. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe and make sure to hype if you're able to. I'll see you guys next time.